Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds, talking about fall and bird feeding. It can be a very frustrating time, uh, especially if you're if you're a regular bird feeder person and you somehow in the summer, maybe on vacation or it just got so hot and, and you just didn't bother feeding birds over the summer. The question comes around, how do you get those birds to come back to your feeder or bird feeder station in the fall so they get used to your feeder station as being a good, reliable source of uh, food and water uh, that can last them through the winter months and then you can have them all, enjoy them all winter long? Well, if you let them go, it, 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 you may not be alone because even those who feed birds, feeders get really slow in the fall because natural berries for them. So they, it, they've they slowed down automatically. But when we first start getting frost, then that adds stress and freezing and thawing causes those natural food sources to draw, drop to the ground and uh, it forces birds into bird feeder stations or try to seek out good, reliable uh, sources of food. Now, the other thing that's going on, especially this year in the fall, is is there usually conditions are drier? And yes, they are for us in our area this year is very, very dry. And so water is an absolute essential part of attracting these birds and getting them back to your yard. So uh, a good, clean, reliable bird bath will be your best friend. I often say you'll steal your neighbor's birds if you're offering water and they're not. And if you can have the water moving this time of year, that, that really helps as well. A bubbling or gurgling sound, uh, flowing, or uh, just agitation uh, helps to gr grab birds' attention and bring them in. If you don't have it, that's okay. If it's just a standard bird bath, but remember, offer multiple depths of water. Uh, put little flat rocks in your bird bath so that the smaller birds have a place to sit and be able to bathe in while deeper water for your larger birds. So water is number one on my list for getting those birds back into your yard. The other, of course, is quality bird seed. And not only quality, I did a whole program and I'll put a link in the description on how to identify quality bird seed. Uh, sunflower, safflower, peanuts, those are high quality uh, seeds, whereas grains, the millet, milo, cracked corn uh, are not as desirable and definitely not as nutritionally valuable. And birds know nutrition. They know uh, or they actually taste it, it that what's well, more nutritionally valuable for them. So if you want to attract quality birds, make sure you've got your feeders really clean uh, and a fresh seed in your feeders. Remember, never keep bird seed in a feeder longer than a month. Uh, don't keep bird seed unrefrigerated in storage longer than three months. I get a lot of calls this time of year about, oh, I, you know, I haven't fed and I've had this bird seed in my can outside for three months, five, four months. No, that seed's probably bad. I mean, humidity alone will probably cause the, that to go bad. So make sure you have good fresh seed going into the fall when you're trying to track birds. Now, when you're attracting birds, you also need to consider uh, presenting your bird seed in different ways. So uh, probably the most classic bird feeder of all that people think of is a hopper feeder, which has a, a, a hopper, a, an area to store bird seed in and it dispenses out into a tray. This is a great example of one here. And Northern Cardinals being America's favorite songbird, people want to attack, uh, to attract them. Well, they like to feed on flat surfaces. So uh, this has a good sized tray that the, the Northern Cardinal can, can land on and feed comfortably. And it also gives them pretty good sight line. So this feeder doesn't exclude anybody, which is really nice. Small birds can feed there, large birds can feed there. So it's a great all around bird feeder. And so are uh, open trays. Uh, birds like, like a Cardinal, which is bright red, uh, is always on the lookout for predators. And uh, a feeder that provides open sight lines like a, a, a tray like this, an open tray this chickadee's on, or the, the previous slide, that those are, are good for cardinals and all around birds. Now, when it comes to feeding, you know, a great variety, you also need to offer up bird seed 
for the the clingers, the the, the perch seeders. The man who invented the original tube feeder uh, did so because he felt sorry for the goldfinches. He loved goldfinches, and they were always getting bullied around uh, by larger birds. So the tube feeders help you know smaller birds get in there, and plus it helps them with specialized seed, very small seed. Like uh, this is our black tie mix, which is a mixture of fine sunflower kernels and also niger seed and it dispenses out the very small holes and it typically uh, excludes big big birds uh, and the goldfinches have a chance. Now it does also show you here that the, the flicker is clinging on there and is darting its tongue in that little tiny hole. So some birds are adapted to, to figuring out things like that. So your tube feeders can also work great. And yes, that tube feeder with the flicker on it has just straight fine sunflower chips in it. And, and uh, that is a really good choice for uh, attracting birds like this. Regular tube feeders with a tray helps. And you can see here the bluebirds are loving uh, this the seed in this tray. And it's because there's a lot of hullless seed. There are sunflower kernels and there are peanuts in this mixture he has. And they love, uh, they can't crack open a seed like uh, those cardinals with those big bills and even finches can crack open seeds. Well, bluebirds have a bill for catching insects. And so when it comes to feeding on seed, they have to have hullless seed so they can swallow it whole. And these guys are, that's what these guys are taking advantage of is the hullless seed in this tray and, and then small pieces of peanuts as well. And this, and, and tube feeders are great because they do provide a great deal of a water protection from uh, for the seed that's inside of there, but adding a tray can uh, it gives a place to dispense for those birds that like to land flat, like that cardinal I was talking about, like their feet on flat surfaces. That's a great way to, to compromise there. And tube feeders are very versatile in that you can put hoods on them to help prevent for the wet, protect them from weather too. So that's, they're, they're just an all-around good choice. Uh, now, if you uh, uh, one good way to provide for those insect-eating birds like the uh, the eastern bluebird and the black-capped chickadee is by feeding mealworms. Very, very popular. And it's a good way to get birds coming into your feeder station if they've been gone for a while because uh, all birds love insects. I mean, with the exception of maybe morning doves. That's about it. But uh, they feed their babies insects. And of course, the, the insects can tr uh, contain moisture for the babies and for themselves and nutritional value. So uh, you can mix in uh, dried mealworms into your seed. You can provide uh, me dried mealworms by themselves. If you feed live mealworms, it's even better. That crawling around uh, it catches their eye and brings them in. So it's a great way to get birds back in the fall is by giving that. But the, the, one of the more popular feeders that we want to warn you about that may be slow in the fall, and that are the peanut feeders. And this includes, will include suet here too. The reason why peanut feeders are really slow in the fall is because of acorn production and nut production in the wild. So birds that like uh, mostly like the peanuts, they'll slow down this time of year. And so you'll notice that your peanut feeders are not going down very fast, but they're highly nutritioned. And a lot of times what I'll do if my peanut feeder, my silo feeder like this is slow, I'll dump them into the tray. So the blue jays and, and others that like the peanuts will take advantage of them. The peanut feeders tend to pick up uh, really in early winter on all, and then they're really busy January through July. So they're, uh, the peanut feeders will come in, but don't be surprised if your peanut feeders are slow in the fall. And of course, one of the places that people forget about bird feeding is the ground. Uh, it, it is a bird feeder. Um, now, there's two different ways you can do it. You know, if you put it, if you throw your bird seed on the ground, and this is my ground throw mix here, which is just basically millet, sunflower, and safflower. Uh, if you throw it right on the ground and you get rain, it can spoil really bad. So a covered uh, ground tray uh, like this is great because it keeps the, the rain off and the snow off, and it gives the birds a place to eat in peace, the ones who want to be down there on the ground. And juncos are a prime example. The native sparrows, like white-throated sparrows and white crown sparrows, they like to feed on the ground. It's where it comes natural to them. So those uh, in that covered ground tray really, really work well for them. They, they love it. And they, if you again, birds feed in all different ways. They like different kinds of seeds, so providing that variety, available, sort of clean, reliable source of water, unfrozen coming into the coming months uh, is super, super important. And, of course, making your bird feeder safe, to make sure they're near cover, if you, uh, and so they can escape into if there's a predator coming around because 
you know, uh, even hawks are on my are on the move now. Sharp shins are moving into our area right now. But Cooper hawks, just make sure your your bird feeder station has some escape cover for for your birds. That'll help tremendously. So it's a really good idea for a program. Thanks for uh, suggesting that. Bird feeding in the fall can be tricky. So I hope this helps. Send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like and a share. And until then, come on, let's talk birds.